The Maya were once believed to be peaceful stargazers because the hieroglyphs they left behind were undecipherable to epigraphers. Early replications of Mayan hieroglyphs were sketched incorrectly to portray this belief that the Maya were peaceful people. Initially, Diego de Landa worked with a Mayan scribe to record the Maya alphabet in 1566. Later on, by looking at the Dresden Codex, Ernest Forsman realized that the Maya used no more than four dots when inscribing numbers, and he gathered that each dot represented one, and then five was represented by a bar in 1880. In deciphering this, he discovered what the Mayan numbers meant, which enabled the understanding of the Mayan calendar. Forsman discovered that the Maya had a series of three calendars that worked simultaneously to produce a date. This system of recording the date was called the calendar round. Once these dates were uncovered, many epigraphers were able to recognize some of the numbers that were intertwined with hieroglyphs on stele, and they assumed that these monuments had records of important ceremonies at these given dates. In spite of this, there were still hieroglyphs to be deciphered. What was the purpose of these temples? Who were these people? These were some of the many questions that had still not been answered. Until 1948, Alberto Ruiz Lujer, an archaeologist, discovered Pakal's tomb in the Temple of Inscriptions at Palenque. Pakal's sarcophagus completely changed the initial view of the Maya. The sarcophagus showed the lineage of rulership, warfare, and the importance of gods to the civilization. This discovery cracked the Mayan code. What it says here, this is the way the history of epigraphy started. And so this is from the breaking of the code, basically. This is the, the original, the original when they broke the code. Wow. The names that were given when they're making the list, where the, the dates show that were related to him were listed first. So it had how you know, to think about the, uh, the birth. And they were also given a second name called Pyramid. They didn't know that was the same thing. But Pyramid was basically re reference to the temple inscriptions. Is the place, the key of the temple with the five doors, this house. Now, archaeologists were able to decipher these messages left on pottery. Pottery detailed myths and rituals of the Maya civilization. Understanding these inscriptions gave one insight into the beliefs and culture of the Maya. Here at the Mesoamerican Room at the Princeton Museum, you have three pottery vases. Vases were important to the Maya civilization because they depicted different myths and stories. For instance, this vase right here shows a story of a god, and the vase in the back shows the story of a ruler and his ascension to the throne. Hieroglyphs were used detailing on the top of pottery, usually telling the story of the different gods and the reason why the ruler created this pottery. Also, pottery was buried inside the tombs of great rulers which allowed epigraphers to identify the significance of the ruler to the city-state. Some vases even detailed the scribe who crafted the artifact, giving archaeologists more information about the time period and the ruler. Yet ceramics and pottery were not the only objects left behind to be deciphered. Stucco and inscriptions carved into buildings told stories of great rulers that used to govern these city-states. These carvings also spoke about captives because rulers would conquer over city-states and depict those who they had captured onto their buildings. If the person is his knees showing respect and his head is still on there, his uh, jewelry, his arms is still in there, his loincloth is still on, but his head is, is the skull of a dead face, big eye, and they have a little shield here. So, if you look to the hieroglyphs here, you're going to see this is the same head. The big eye, right here. So they're giving you his name as an icon, and his name as a hieroglyph. And they tell you he is from Pomona, like he of Pia. These glyphs not only show lineage and record names, but also told stories about Mayan history and their conquest. Rulers also commissioned the building of great monuments called stella. These monuments were created during special dates to show the rulers' connection to the gods and to legitimize their divine kingship. 
Stella A commemorates the ending of the 15th platoon. 18 Rabbit built a structure of himself to celebrate the ending of this huge calendar date. In the Mayan civilization, most rulers built temples and pyramids. However, he didn't. He built a structure of himself to show that he valued artwork more than architecture. When our class visited city-states such as Copan, Curigual, and Tikal, the importance of Stele to the civilization was evident. To gather materials to build these large structures and to find the correct artisan to portray the ruler in a godlike manner was not only a lot of work, but showed the dedication to the creation of these ceremonial statues. Along with Stele, the Maya also erected altars, which were places to sacrifice offerings to the gods. Sacrifice was used as a way to find favor with the gods. Also, altars were inscribed with the name of gods and rulers to show the connection of power to the throne. We're right here at Altar Q uh, in Copan. And what's interesting about the Maya and something that we've seen at all of our cities from Palenque, Bonaparte, Yashilan, and Tikal, monuments that record the passing of power. Um, and that, that's something very important for our rulers to do. Uh, they need to justify their lineage, their power, and we've seen this with Pakal at Palenque and how his mother has been given power and they rewrite history. We can see the detailed lineage of Copan on the altar queue. Without the hieroglyphic record of the power of these people, we'd have no insight about the importance of these rulers. Hieroglyphs not only let us into the daily life of the Maya, but describe kingship, blood sacrifice, and warfare.